Hi, and welcome to the Pod Cafe. I'm Nick Potts. And I'm Emily Potts. And we drink coffee and talk about the podcast we're listening to. Yep. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. What are you drinking today? Today's interesting. So, my rating's going to be uh, a little tougher to do. So, my coffee is from a coffee shop called the Blue Box Cafe, and it is a Doctor Who themed coffee shop. That's fun. Uh, I bet you love that. Very fun. Love Doctor Who. Love everything about it. So, coffee shop gets a 10 out of 10 for me. Coffee, like a 6 probably. What? Why? I, well, I got the cold brew and it's like strong. Mm. Like I can f- I can taste the caffeine in it. Wow. It's like, yeah, it's interesting. It's a uh, It's not a taste I've ever tasted in coffee before. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything more I could say about it. <laughs> okay. Um, but, um, what makes it Doctor Who themed? Just the decoration, or like, is that coffee have a fun Doctor Who esque title? Uh, I, the coffee does not. Um, but I don't. The blue box is a reference to the TARDIS, um, which is a blue police phone box and that is uh the doctor's time traveling ship spaceship <laughs> okay. um yeah and it's just it's just themed inside there which is really cool i enjoyed it okay cool what are you drinking um so i'm just drinking an iced americano um but i got it from one of my favorite coffee shops near me it's called vicinity coffee vicinity yeah it's really cute it's like a a little trendy looking coffee shop but um when i was studying for my supply chain certification i used to go there for like six hours and just sit there and study and it was a great coffee shop for that so it just has like good vibes to me wow that's cool so how does the uh the uh how does it rate compared to the other what'd you say in americano yeah, Ice Americano. Um, you know, I think it's a pretty good one. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it an eight. I think my only down rating towards it is not really caused by the coffee shop at all, but by the heat in this state right now, um, and the fact that my ice keeps melting really quickly, and so it's watering things down, and I hate that. Man, that was a problem for you last week too. I know. You know what the thing is? I gotta move. It's too freaking hot here right now, and it's too freaking cold the rest of the year. So, yeah, that's so funny. That's too hot because you do live in Minneapolis, which is not a hot state. It's freaking hot right now, like really hot. <laughs> I had, Where would you go? That's cooler. Well, here's the thing. I had this Uber driver last night, and he was telling me that I was like, "How are you doing with this heat?" And he was like, "Well, I'm from Kenya." And it's, <laughs> no, this is, he goes, and it's way cooler in Kenya than it is here. What? And I was in like. In Africa? Yeah. And he was like, it's dry heat there and there's wind all the time. Here, it's just humid, hot, heavy. It's awful. It's the worst type of weather. Wow. Well, that's insane. I, yeah. I guess you got to move then. So to answer your question, maybe I'll go to Kenya. It's cooler. Oh, well, Maybe. That's cool. International. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So, um, would you give it an eight? Yeah, an eight. All right. It's all right. Yeah, it's solid. It's fine. I like it. All right. Well, today we're talking about a, a really fun podcast in the music genre. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty stoked about this one because I've, I've had this one saved to my library for a long time. Um, since I got the app that I listen to podcasts on. Um, but have never listened to an episode for whatever reason. I don't really know why, but, um, I don't know. I was, I was always looking for fun music podcasts and found this one, but I I just don't know why I never listened to it. Um, so I enjoyed finally diving into it and actually found that I like it a lot now. Yeah, I, I never saw myself as someone to listen to a music podcast because, I mean, music's kind of your thing. It's not as much my thing. And I listen to music, but not very often. 
So I was like, this is going to be a tough genre for me to get into, but I actually really liked it. This podcast is called uh, Song Exploder, by the way. I don't oh, think yeah. We said I think that we yet. skipped over that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's called Song Exploder. The host, we call him a host or the producer, I guess. Yeah, he's the host. Yeah, he's the host and the producer. His name is Rishikesh Herway, and which is just kind of a fun name, so there's that. Um, and he does this show bi-weekly, and he features musicians talking about the creative process behind a song. So not necessarily their band, but they deconstruct one song each episode. And yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like two of my favorite things combined because it feels like it's a music. It's about music, first of all, but it feels like a storytelling podcast, too. I was a little confused at first um, because I was expecting it to be more interview style, and it's not that. No, I think that's kind of fascinating because um, like the host introduces himself. And says, like, I'm in the intro, and we'll talk about the intro, but I guess, like, he introduced himself, and then you don't hear him at all, like, ever again. Yeah, he only interjects if there's, like, additional information you might need. But, um, yeah, let's just go into it. Let's just start talking about the intro. The intro is different from anything we've had already, too, in that there almost isn't one. I mean, there there is an intro, but no music. There's no intro music. You're listening to Song Exploder. My name is Rishikesh Hirway. MGMT was formed by Ben Goldwasser and Andrew Van Weingarten in 2001. The song Time to Pretend was one they wrote early in their career. It first came out on their debut, the Time to Pretend EP, in 2005. And three years after that, they put out a new version of the song on their first full-length album, Oracular Spectacular, which was named Album of the Year by NME and was one of Rolling Stone's top 20 albums of the decade. It went on to sell over a million copies worldwide. In this episode, Ben and Andrew trace how the song Time to Pretend was made, from its dorm room origins to its first recording, to re-envisioning it with Grammy-winning producer Dave Fridman. They also uncover the hidden sounds and Easter eggs within the recording. Here's MGMT on Song Exploder. Well, there's like a background beat. There is? I don't remember that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's like a little... It's like a... It almost sounds like an alarm, like a that you would like wake up to, like a. It's like oh, oh okay. It's just like a little beat in the background when yeah, he's like it's introducing just not himself. Like, yeah, it's just not like you know a lot of podcasts will will like we do. We just have music playing yeah. at some point. That's like the intro. Yeah, they don't do that because I think he talks he over, talk it. over his. Yeah, he talks yeah. over it. But there's still like a little beat. It's kind of cute. Yeah, that's I like true. it. That's true. But um, yeah, so he just introduces himself. He talks about, uh, he does some ads in the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, He does, I guess they don't really stand out to me. I know he does ads, but I think they're quick. I can't remember what the ads are either, but either that means I'm not paying attention to the ads or they're just quick enough or it doesn't stick. But yeah, so he just, uh, what does he do? He introduces himself. He introduces the um, artists that they're talking to and then they just go and sometimes like sometimes it's the full band sometimes it's just you know like the drummer and the vocalist or something you know so he'll introduce like who they are in relation to the band and then yeah. they the song that they're going to talk about and then they just kind of jump right into it mm-hmm. so the intro is pretty um, quick the intro is pretty quick what do you uh what are you rating it? Are you getting everything you want out of the intro? I think so. I think I'm going to give it a 10, to be honest. Like, it's so quick, and I like it, and there's, I don't know. I like the little beat in the background. Yeah, I think not having a large music focus in the intro was a good decision to make, because the whole podcast is music-focused, and you want that focus to stay on the artist music and not your own intro music. I don't know if that's relevant at all, but I, I think it was a good good idea. Yeah, I think so too. What are you going to rate it? Uh, I'll give it a 10. 10 sounds good to me. Okay, look at that. We're already on the same page. Yeah. Weird. wonder when that'll change. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, in the next one. What's next, content? <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about the content. Okay.
One thing I'm surprised you didn't mention yet, but maybe you didn't know this actually, but this podcast it's now an independent co- podcast, um, but it was originally launched on the Maximum Fun Network. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Song Exploder was on the Max Fun Network? That's where it originally launched, and then in February of 2015, it went independent and joined Radiotopia in June. But OG launch is from your people. Wow. Look at that. You didn't even bring them in this time, but I brought them in for you. <laughs> Can't have a podcast without mentioning them. No. Nope. But we won't say the name, so people will just have to go there and figure it out. Well, um, they know. I think they know, based on every yeah. single other episode. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, that's that's really fun. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Now I like this podcast even more. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, well, as far as content goes... I already started to say this is like my perfect podcast. I think it's music and again, story, t- like storytelling. They don't mean to be like storytelling, but that's what it feels like. Yeah. And, but they, I mean, like, I feel like that's kind of cool because it makes you realize that I think maybe I just like, don't think about this all the time when I'm listening to music, but like most songs probably have a story behind them. It's not just like, let me just rock out the next chart topper. Yeah, like a hundred percent of them are like that. They all were, I don't nothing to begin with. But um, just, just real quick, a little overview. What they do is, the artists pick one single song, and they break the whole thing down. So they break down the music in general. They tell you how they came up with the the drum beats and the guitar riffs and the vocals and they tell you how they wrote the lyrics and then they tell you what the song's supposed to mean or what they're talking about and they tell you um even you know things they were doing while they wrote the song what was going on in their lives um and yeah so they just break an entire song apart and then create it again kind of recreate it and then I love that at the end of the podcast, we get to hear the whole thing in its entirety. Yeah, I really like that too, because a lot of them are either bands I've heard of or like songs I've heard of, but sometimes it's like, I don't know a ton about them. Like they're not like, it's not like we got Drake out there or something, you know, it's not like the the top hits of the day, but it's like kind of bands that I maybe know of or maybe don't even know of. And then when I hear the song, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Now I get it. Yeah, that is cool. And they they don't have, like, nobodies. You know, like, Rachel Platten's been on it and yeah. Lord and um, some other people that I think most people would recognize. But I think the cooler part is the people you haven't heard of because there's a lot of artists, the majority of them, that I haven't listened to or heard of at all and don't know that I ever would have. But then from listening to this podcast, I found a bunch of new artists that I'm kind of into right now. Um, Just, I don't know, it just helped me find some more music that I actually like. Or the I just love the process of creating the music. And I think after you see how it all came together, the song is a lot more enjoyable to listen to. I just appreciate it more. Yeah, I think so too. And I like that they do that, like, like every single piece of the song from, like, their thought process to the sounds that went into it. And it's, like, makes me just appreciate the music just so much more. And Yeah, it's so cool hearing hearing how they make some of the sounds. Like, uh, oh, I can't remember which episode. I think it was the Churches episode, maybe. Uh, Is it the one I told you to listen to? Uh, well, no, I did listen to the church. Oh, uh, no, not that one. It was the Alt J episode. Oh, yeah. Um, they were doing a song about a pool party, and they have the sound of somebody going off a diving board and into a pool, but they didn't want to use just like a sample pack for that. So to recreate it, they just took like pieces of plywood or two by fours or something, and they like just hit them. And it sounded like a, a diving board. And then they threw a big rock into like a pond and made the sound <laughs> of somebody splashing in. 
and that's what they used and so it's like that's really innovative and cool cool to hear how that came to be yeah there is a bunch of those where i was like oh that's what that sound is like um the sylvanesso one i don't i think that's the one i told you to listen to right yeah yeah so there it was their song coffee and they have this like tinkering noise in it and it's actually that like xylophone toy that kids used to play with yeah the kids toy and i was like that is nuts because it's like in my head i'm like oh they're probably like using some big sound producer like some xylophone to create this song but literally it's just a toy that they're just clinking on it and i like i mean you know it's like a kind of a weird sound but you don't know like where it's coming from and i thought the same with the one of the lord episodes when she was talking about how she was like oh i couldn't figure out how to transition the verse so she just put like a lion roaring and i was like yeah to get a roar in there <laughs> i was like what and now when and then when i they played the whole song i was like waiting to hear that and i was like oh wait yeah. that was kind of cool <laughs> yeah it fits yeah it's cool and and in the uh the coffee song they left in the sound of his fingers hitting that xylophone toy instead of just taking the sound it produced which was really interesting i thought and that was kind of cool yeah and I do like at the end that they play the whole song. Sometimes I don't listen to the whole song because then I just want to hear another one. But I like that if it is a song I haven't heard before, they then just like, and here's the song and it plays. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It wouldn't be nearly as good if we didn't get to hear the whole thing come together. Yeah. Um, Maybe we should uh, ask Sylvanesso if we can use his coffee song as our podcast song. <laughs> yeah, that could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I said his, but it's two people, right? It's a guy and a girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going There's to see them in a few weeks. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. You can tell them you heard them on Song Exploder. I'll just go up to them while they're playing and be like, hey, excuse me. I just want to tell you, yeah. I heard you on Song Exploder, and then we talked about you on our podcast, so you should check us out. <laughs> yeah, then you can ask them if we can use their song. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, I don't, it's weird because it's like, I really like the content and it's cool and the episodes are so short, so I don't feel like I have a ton to say about it, <laughs> which is I bad. I wish I did, but I really like it. Well, I don't have any criticisms about it is the problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how do you, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like it a lot. I like the whole thing. Um, I guess I'll just rate it. I give it a 10. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it a 10, too. It's yeah. bad because it's just, I don't know, I really like it. It's good. Yeah, even the even the artists, I don't know who they are. Or even the music genres, I'm not really into. I'm really interested in hearing how it comes together. So, I don't know, the content is really good. I also think the artists are really good. Like, obviously, a lot of these songs take a lot to put together. Like, a lot of time, a lot of creative thoughts and people but they're really good at summarizing it to a point where they're not talking about like okay for the first 10 seconds we you know like not like breaking it down in the sense of like we have to listen to how every second was put together for a four minute song but you really get like how the song kind of started what are like the big pieces or like the really unique or weird pieces that they come up with what's the background and then kind of like how it all came together yeah you get the foundation you get like some song changing moments um you get like one one of one interesting episode was the rachel platten episode and her talking about how her song fight song uh was in the hillary clinton campaign and how that like drastically changed her life and then how that brought about this new song which is the one she did on song exploder um so you even get that kind of stuff like personal anecdotes yeah i thought that was really interesting i listened to that one too because it was interesting to me how she first started out talking a lot about how she just didn't ever want to like associate her songs or her music to in a political way because she didn't want to alienate any of her listeners Right. But then she was like, as soon as I realized that like it wasn't a political thing I was standing for, it was like what was behind that political party and like the 
the females and like female empowerment and things like that, more of the message and not necessarily the politics. Then she was like into it. And I think that was like cool how she was like very hesitant, but then realized that her message was that important piece and not necessarily the political environment. Yeah. And it was, it was funny how she, uh, she didn't want to be like the female empowerment artist for a while. Um, and then really tried not to write songs like that, and then eventually just came back around to it. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah, it was cool. One of my favorite details from Song Exploder is the Kimbra episode where she was talking about um, she was riding her bike through the city when she came up with lyrics and stuff, and she was just listening to it over and over again. And uh, I don't know, that was a cool visual. So now anytime I listen to that song... I picture someone riding their bike <laughs> through the city listening to it. That's true. It does kind of change the way you think about a song. Yeah. Um, let's talk about like the entertainment and attractiveness of this podcast. Okay. I mean, music is just something I'm really into. And I will often Google or try to find interviews from songs I'm really into to see if I can like find what they think they say the meaning of it is or like what it's supposed to be about. Um, so this, this podcast is just up my alley. It's like all that right there for you. I just, I, I really like having something that goes over the creation pod process of this stuff. So do you think even after our week here, you'll go back and listen to more? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, um, I probably will. I no, I definitely will. I would. I want to say it might depend on the artists that come out, but the ones I didn't know, like I'm very happy I listened to the Kimbra one because now I'm listening to that song on repeat constantly. So it's it's a it's been a cool way to just find new music. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was like excited to listen to it, but then I was like, oh, this is a cool way to like find new bands or. Like, I don't know, just you kind of get excited about something different than you hear on like the top charts. Yeah, I think for this entertainment value, it's really it really does draw me in. I would prob- probably give it a nine instead of a ten only because if there were artists I, w- I were more familiar with, I was more familiar with, I am more familiar with, I am more familiar with, <laughs> <laughs> if there were those artists... It would increase it even more, but um, it would just, it would be easier to just go right now. I still kind of got to convince myself a little bit to listen to the ones about the artists I don't know, Um, Yeah, but it's very good. Um, I kind of agree. Like I'm still like, I like that it's a good way to find new artists, but as I'm like scrolling through trying to decide which episodes to listen to, I'm like. Eh, I don't know them. Do I want to listen to that? You know? So yeah. I think I'll go back to like keep checking in and see who they keep adding. Um, maybe it'll help me grow my musical interest, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think I give it, I think I give it a nine too. The other thing, the reason why I give it a nine is. Sometimes I feel like because the episodes are so short, they, like, cut a lot of things. And then I'm like, hmm, like, sh- could they, like, some things I just feel like are a little rushed. I don't know. Okay. That's fair. That's all I got. So a nine. Right. I think a nine. nine. Well, shoot, we're cruising. I know. <laughs> what? Uh, what's the next one? Uh, the, oh, the next topic that we need to talk about is the structure the structure okay i got a little bit to say about this uh this goes back into the kind of storytelling form storytelling storytelling (laughs) form that format that they have um at first i wasn't sure how i felt about it not being interview based i didn't i i started listening to one episode and didn't finish it and had to go to another one because i i thought i was like missing something um, cause it was just a one-sided conversation the whole time, but now I think I really enjoy it that way. I think maybe 
having an extra person just cutting in would take away from it a little bit. I feel like the way it is right now, I'm more seeing it through the artist's perspective than just hearing about it, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, I get that. Because I was like a little thrown off by that at first, too. I was like, why do we have a host and producer that you don't really hear from? But I think maybe... I feel like the episodes that have two people, uh, I like a little better because they kind of talk to each other a little bit. When it's like yeah. one artist, sometimes I'm like, the they're just kind of talking, saying things, talking about the song. Sometimes the host will like interject to guide it a little bit, but those ones feel almost like slight, like almost like they have no structure. Yeah, they're kind of just talking to themselves. Yeah. I do like that, yeah, the multiple people one, because they can bounce off each other. Shoot, I was going to say something and totally forgot what now. Mm, let's think about it. What I are you going to say? I hate when that happens. What are you going to say? <laughs> well, here's the nice thing, is that I can sit here in silence and say nothing, and then cut the entire silence out and make it sound like I didn't sit here in silence. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, the beauty of pre-recording and then production. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let me talk a little bit more while you sit there and think. You look yeah. like you're thinking really hard, like you're you're po- <laughs> like you're poking your own brain right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I do like the structure. I feel like, like we kind of talked about ads and how we neither of us really noticed them, and I think that's a good thing because the things I remember about this podcast are like the like a fun fact about a song that I didn't know or something like I always end the podcast thinking like oh that was really cool that I learned whatever about that song so I feel like they structure it really well in the fact of like they're only like 15 minute episodes we got the info in the intro about who it is what song jump right into it there's always like some really fun facts that are emphasized and then they play the song at the end and I'm like huh cool learn something new yeah, it's um, the best way to do it, because uh, if they were to do like a, pardon my take, where they interject ads throughout the episode, it would take you out of the creation process of the song. They they, they just can't split up the uh, story from the artist. It would make it significantly worse, I think. Yeah. And, um, no, keep going. Okay, you're, well, you're I was going to say... Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I remembered what I was going to say um, about the structure and them not doing an interview thing. I think it's nice that the host is not trying to highlight the interview. He's trying to highlight the music and the story behind it, not not that like he's interviewing them. So he's not trying to make sure people know this is his podcast. He's just trying to highlight the music, which is really cool. Yeah, which is another interesting thing. Like, you think this dude, like, he's doing it for his podcast, and he's, like, not really a face of it at all, you know? It's kind of more behind the scenes, even though he introduces himself. Like, if Song Exploder continues to grow, like, that's the success, not that guy, not, like, his hosting or production of it, you know? Yeah, and I wonder how much he actually does interview them and just cuts his side out. I wonder if he does that a lot or if he kind of just lets them go a lot. I kind of hope he just lets them go because um, I like the idea that he's not leading the story or conversation in any direction. He's just getting it straight from the artist's point of view. I feel like, yeah, I was thinking about that too. Um, But I feel like, like I also wish or hope that he's not just, like, cutting out his side. But I also think in this type of podcast, he probably doesn't have to. Like, artists are, like, creative people, and they like to, I mean, generally like to talk about their creative process. So I feel like it'd be easy for them to, like, just go on a rant. I mean, you're more of, like, the artistic creative side than I am. Like, maybe you can relate to that. But in my head, I'm like, I feel like if I created something like this, I would love to talk about it. Yeah, I bet mostly what he does is, like, keep him on track, 
because <laughs> they probably just like jump around all over the place. He probably keeps them on track and prompts like different uh, pieces of the song. And I, I would imagine that's all he really has to do. Yeah. I wonder if he picks the song or if they he picks the artist and then they bring the song that they want to talk about. Mm, I bet he picks the artist and they pick a song. Yeah. That would probably make the most sense, I guess. Because they would know which ones have a cooler story to tell. Yeah, or just which ones they connect to the most themselves or which ones have... Yeah, the most interesting creative story behind it, or which ones they just enjoyed making the most. So I'm going to give Structure a 10 out of 10, I think. Dang! This is like a high-rated podcast for us. Yeah, I'm surprised, actually. I actually think I'm going to give the Structure a 10 out of 10, too. Dang! <laughs> I don't know, I don't have anything bad to say about it. It works. Good for Song Explode. I mean, it works for what they're doing, and I don't hate it. I don't think I can do, do it any better. Shows. They do live shows, which is fun. Oh. Are there any nearby? Should we go? Uh, Well, I don't know. But um, I know look. the... I'm pretty sure the church's one was live. Mm. I can't remember which ones were. But yeah, they do live shows, but all the same. So you almost don't even know because they cut out a lot of audience sounds and they cut out he cuts himself out so um but it's cool because you will you will hear the audience like laugh and stuff if they make the bands make jokes but yeah so i don't know pretty neat 10 out of 10 for structure live events i see that Ooh, they even have like workshops and stuff oh what does that mean workshops? oh like there's a podcasting 101 workshop in los angeles oh hosted go by Richie Cash of Song Exploder. Three hour wow. workshop. Man, I wish it wasn't in LA. Yeah. Um, cool. I mean, that's fun. All right, easy. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Are we on the last criteria already? Yeah, we're we're just cruising today. Um, and this I feel like is gonna go quick too. The last one is production. I mean, it would be strange if the production was bad. on this one i feel like because it is essentially a podcast about production yeah that's true here's the things i really like about their production i like that when the artist is talking about a certain piece um they play that piece in the background while they're talking over it this is actually really i'm really interested maybe to find out how they do this because they will they take like just for example just the drum line out of a song and we'll just play that there's so like there's a lot of editing that goes into making this podcast and also like being allowed to do that and you would you would have to get the like master file of the song to pull out the individual parts of that song oh Um, interesting yeah i would not have known that yeah, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. So that's really cool. Um, it's funny that you say you feel like there's a lot that goes behind the production because I was just kind of looking up like they're about and they only have three people on their team for this production. So it's the host and producer, Rishi Cash, the assistant producer, and then there's an illustrator. An illustrator? What does he illustrate? Just their, uh, do they have artwork? Sure. Or is it just their logo? Uh, it's really unclear what an huh. illustrator does. It doesn't tell me any more than his name. But, yeah. So the team's only three people, which is kind of wow. cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, it's it's got to be a lot of work pulling all those pieces together, or pieces out. Yeah. Um, they even have, like samples of audio from when the song was a demo and then samples of the final song and things that's changed so it's just it's a lot of editing i'm impressed that's true i kind of didn't think about that because i loved how they did that in a lot of the episodes like the the lord one she's talking about how she really wanted to have like the sounds of a brass instrument in there and um and now i'm kind of blanking on what song this one was but 
it was, it was called sober. Oh, sober. Yeah. So, um, she show or like, they play the different variations of like the trumpets or the brass instruments that they were like kind of playing with before they decided on the final one. And I was kind of like, Oh, that's cool. Like you don't even think of like, does the artist actually keep all this, you know, so they have something to look back at or they, yeah, they probably keep it in a library. Like, um, those guys, they did an episode on the guys who did the stranger things theme song for the TV show. Oh Um, yeah. They just like sent a bunch of their stuff from their music library in to see what they liked. But yeah, Lord's a good example because she also did, she started creating the song with like these minor piano chords that she really liked. And we got to hear the actual piano part that didn't even end up in the song because they changed it to a more like upbeat sound. Um, But we got to hear both, both versions of it. I feel like, also, maybe production-wise on this song, it's something that's easy for the producer to do because I was reading a little bit about his background, and he lives in L.A., and he had um, originally moved to L.A. to like produce and score movies. So like songs and production is like the root of his background. Yeah. He probably loves doing it. Oh, totally. Which is cool. He's like... it's not, Yeah, their podcast sounds like an awesome job. Yeah. <laughs> it really... I would love... I would love to work on that podcast. And they do... It seems like they do both a little mix of, like, in-person interviews and remote, like, over the phone or the computer. And I feel like I've listened to quite a few episodes, and I don't think I can pick out which ones were which. Can't tell the difference. Which is awesome. Like, usually That's you can fantastic. tell. Yeah, the audio is so clear and it's so um like crisp and full and it's like when I when I listen to it, it literally feels like I'm just sitting in a dark room and the only thing is the voice. It's yeah. it's like literally if they were talking in my ear. It's great quality. Yeah. Oh, I just looked up the um like the song exploder website, like their song exploder dot net. And each of the episodes has, like, an illustration of the band on it. So that's the illustrator. He, oh, like, draws them, and they're really that's good. That's really this cool. This is amazing. look at that. You should look at them. That's very cool. I wonder if they make any money off that. You think they sell that artwork? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know, though. They should, if they don't. Yeah, because they look cool. I'm now just browsing for, through them, and they are freaking awesome. Man, that's awesome. Well, um, I think I have to give the production a 10 out of 10. I think I would give it the same, too, because I think that piece of, like, the fact that they do both in and over the phone and, like, you really can't tell is something I really appreciate because sometimes that kind of annoys me on other interview-type podcasts. It's so good. I think it, it's, it has to be the best production of a podcast we've heard so far. Yeah, for sure. Which makes me feel like we any other tens we've given we should have not. <laughs> we gotta go back. Let's. We gotta go back. We gotta retract everything and go back. We gotta yeah. We gotta dock at least a point from all the other ones because this is this is now the gold standard. <laughs> it kind of is. Also, like I really enjoyed listening to this podcast, but I think I don't enjoy talking to you about them as much when our thoughts are the exact same. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely less interesting because all we do is, yep, I yep, agree. I mm-hmm. agree. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it was good. Yep. And I think maybe because, like, this is, like, a genre that you really like. And I was kind of like, sure, I'm up for whatever. I wouldn't really listen to this normally. It was like, a, oh, okay, sure, we'll do this podcast. And then it, it was actually a really good one. <laughs> I think that's how you know a podcast is good because neither of us had listened to it before. We had no preconceived notions or biases about it um and it is music may might be more my thing than it is your thing and we can still come out and rate it super high i think that that's just a good podcast super high and the exact same we have the same score yeah well you can't get higher than 10 (laughs) (laughs) 
but we did each give it one nine. So both yeah, of us I'm have the an same average. category too. I know. Both of us have the same average of a nine point eight. Wow. Huge. I don't even I I I just think my overall is gonna be a ten anyways. Uh I think I'm gonna keep my net on nine point eight. <laughs> okay. Just to be different or <laughs> um partly to be different and also partly I think just Sometimes I do struggle with the fact of choosing an episode because it's not like everyone I know, you know? Yeah. The nice thing, though, is they're they're fairly short, too. So even if it's not a great one, you can make it through it pretty quick. Yeah, that's true. I have, like, no regrets on any episode. I'm like, eh, it wasn't, like, the best or I don't really care about this band or this song. But short episode, I lost nothing. Because just the process of creating something is interesting enough, no matter who or what it is. But yeah, I breezed through these episodes so quick. Yeah, I think I listened to like four or five of them one morning, and I was like, dang, that was a lot. (laughs) Yeah, I also had a lot of, when I was listening to it, I was traveling a lot. Long car ride, I was on a plane to New Mexico and then back. So I just put a bunch in my queue and just listen to them straight through. Mm, that's a good plan. Yeah. And it's nice that like, these. this is another thing we didn't really talk about, but it's like not really at all relevant to this podcast, but nothing, you don't need to listen to one before you can listen to another. I always appreciate that when you can like jump around and look for what you want to listen to. Yeah. You don't have to listen to them in order. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that was nice for sure. It's a great combination of both. It's a podcast, but also music. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> listening to a, a Spotify playlist, but with commentary. Yeah. You learn some things. I listened to it a lot this past week when I was working out, which is fun, because I do like to listen to podcasts when I work out, but sometimes like I also just like to have music, and so I got yeah. both. Yeah, you get both. It's awesome. It's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I really, I really like this podcast. So be going back. we give songs voter 9.8. People. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, 9.8 10. average. 10 overall for me, but yeah. 9.8 average. 9.8 average. That's huge. People should That's go phenomenal. listen to it. Is that is that the highest one we've done so far? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to top what you, your favorite. But I think. Our, yeah, but even then, it wasn't perfect. I know. I think this is the highest one we've done so far. Yeah. Good for you, Song Exploder. Yeah. Keep it up. You guys are killing it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we, we kind of breezed through this episode. Yeah, but this is a good balance because our last week when we had our guests was a lot longer, so we give you a little long. shorter one this time. Balance yeah. out what we're doing. Yeah, not much shorter, but yeah, a little shorter. Um, and then we're going to have a little bit of a break. I have to go out of town for a couple weeks, so I just won't be around to record and edit. Um, so August 5th and August 12th, we won't have an episode, but then after that, we'll be back on track and finishing this first season. Woohoo! Yeah, we're going to take a little summer vacay while Nick is gone, but we will be back at it. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four more episodes to close out season one here before we'll be on to a new season cool yeah so that's all um quick one for you guys today but i mean we love this podcast so you should check it out and you can find us on itunes spotify google play stitcher or at the com. you can also tweet at us at the underscore podcafe or email us with Suggestions, feedback, podcasts you want us to listen to, just some say hey, coffee recommendations, anything at podcafe.contact at gmail.com. So yeah, that's it. Also, please, please send us sign-off ideas. Oh, yeah. A sign-off idea, a podcast that you'd like us to listen to, and maybe a coffee recommendation. We could use any of those things. I'm drowning with nothing to say to cap off every episode. <laughs> Why? You don't like just the random rants? Just, all right. See ya. All right. All right. And have that's a, have it. Have a good day. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Stay caffeinated. I'm, so, I'm sick of it. Stay caffeinated's pretty good, but not I good like, enough. 
I know. What? But maybe, maybe it just might have to grow. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, stay caffeinated. Stay caffeinated.